Here's everything that you need to know about the new class Pyromancer. So all the crafting recipes, the synergies, how to play it and how everything works. If you want to know how to play this and see a bunch of builds with this, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be uploading a bunch over the coming weeks. Or check out the live stream on Twitch, which is probably happening right now. Anyway, you start with a very interesting looking backpack because uh, what it does is once you enter the shop, you spend one gold to generate a flame. So you're playing the entire game with one less gold every single round. Well. Technically, not really, because you get a flame for it that you can sell back. So if you just sell back the flame you get every round, you're basically playing with the same amount of money, but you don't have a backpack effect. But you do want to be keeping flames around, and that is because they craft into a lot of different things. If you don't know what a flame is, it gives you a heat. It's just, you play it, it gives you a heat. Very simple. That's not the only thing, it also gives you 5 maximum health for each fire item inside. So this is incredibly strong early, late game it's kind of meh, you can get like a little bit extra health but it's not very relevant. So this is mainly going to be really important to position in the early game. You want to put as many heat items as possible inside this backpack, which is flames. You get a bunch of flames, so you're going to be very strong early on. Now that we have this in of the way, let's take a look at the class items first. So the first one, this looks really fun. Uh, friendly fire. It is uh, also the animation around it looks really cool. The star items are just all around it. It's very simple. It's just a square. And this guy looks like uh, the little fire from Howl's Moving Castle. I don't know if anyone saw that anime or that movie, uh, but if you did, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, so every three seconds, you use mana to gain to heat so if you have sources of mana gain which this class i think can play some mana builds then you could use some of that to just gain heat every three seconds to heat i don't know how fast or slow that is for this class yet because there's so many things that work with heat and the skill heat uh, we'll have to see but that is not the main reason why you would pick this it triggers 10 percent faster for each fire item so if you put a bunch of fire items around it it'll go a lot faster so those three seconds can easily go down to two seconds uh, or even faster i don't know how much you can speed this up but so you can basically use mana pretty fast to generate a lot of heat and of course the more heat you have the faster this will trigger that's the beautiful thing of heat uh the more heat you have the faster things will trigger and snowball so pyromancer as far as i understand this class starts a little bit slow because a lot of things want to generate heat and use heat and things like that but as soon as you get going and live long enough you should be unstoppable because you just you know chunks right you've seen enough chunks snowball that chunks need a little bit of warming up a little bit of scaling and once they are at like 20 30 heat it just start going insane and you have no chance anymore so that's going to be similar for a lot of these items but once you reach 20 heat you gain five luck once you reach 40 heat you gain 15 regen both of those are not super relevant look this class again is not really about crit it's mainly going to be there for the accuracy or some items might want to use luck the 15 regen also is mainly good if you want to do bloodthorn so i guess this could be a setup piece for bloodthorn with heat or with uh, hunger blades i don't know and then once you reach 80 heat which is the final threshold you deal 100 damage now 100 damage is a lot early on but later in the game it's kind of you can't rely on this this is just a bonus as well so eventually you just deal 100 which is pretty big it's like a great sword hit that crits uh, i wouldn't say it's irrelevant but this cannot be your build you cannot just focus on this this is kind of like an extra addition so friendly fire seems fun it just seems like a good way to generate heat with mana uh, and get some bonus effects along the way so very flexible i i think it's gonna see play for sure next up now this is a very interesting one uh, that i'm unsure of it's called the burning banner it has 25 percent chance to protect buffs on you from being removed and debuffs from your opponent from being cleansed so like corrupted armor being able to prevent cleansing on opponents this does something similar and your buffs not being removed like we saw in berserker there's ways to remove buffs from opponents there's purple gems there's other ways like lotus deck of cards so this is kind of just you play it if you're scared of people trying to counter your buffs or debuffs because this class does rely pretty heavily on it of course pretty heavily on the heat but also on the cold applying to others on your mana and things like that so in case you want to play it safe this seems like something fine to just slap on the board it does not need any conditions it already applies at 25 percent from the start but of course uh, there's more to it uh you have like stars in a row as you can see the start holy item activates so those need to be holy items you have 30 percent chance to inflict one blind for five seconds so in case you want to be playing a blind build this this seems really bad still holy items are like very expensive you don't have many of them they trigger pretty i mean they trigger pretty fast i guess on average but you only have a 30 percent chance which is pretty low to only inflict one blind for five seconds and then it goes away so it's just low percent low blind temporary now of course lightsabers can go really fast let's say you have like two lightsabers next to it and sped up they go really fast you will get some little bit extra blind 
um, I could see it being okay. Again, it's going to protect your debuffs as well, so it's harder for them to cleanse that blind. So I guess if blind would be good or make a comeback in um, Pyromancer, this would be the item you play with it. Also, lastly, every three seconds you remove two buffs from your opponent and gain two regen. So you gain two regen, again, lightsaber synergy. So this just seems like a lightsaber item because uh, that regen can convert it into uh, obviously blind, temporary blind. And removing the two buffs is kind of extra. So in case you don't play a lightsaber with it, this is more like a tech piece that just protects buffs, debuffs, removes more buffs, gives regen things like that, but that is about it. Then we have Dark Lantern. Uh, it has like a row with stars on the side and a row with diamonds on the other. Start a battle, you lose 50% health. So you start combat at 50, which you might think, what? why would I ever do that? Uh, but then before defeat, so if you are supposed to die, you reincarnate with 50% life and become invulnerable for two seconds. You go back to 50 HP, but you get two seconds of invulnerability, kind of like you're playing crown. So essentially, you do still play the game with 100% health, but you get a free crown trigger, which isn't great. So just if this was Dark Lantern, it would still be pretty bad. But on reincarnation, you deal 10 damage for each stored fire item and inflict six debuffs for each uh, dark item on the other side, which you can only see four uh, fire items, so you can deal like 40 damage at most, uh, which is not insane. Like if you reincarnate, I do 40 it's whatever but i think the debuffs are big six debuffs for each dark item if you do have four dark items that's 24 random debuffs that could be massive but other than that i don't know how this could work in a build like what with what build does reincarnating or being low the entire time have a lot of benefits there's not that many it's pretty hard to make work and i think the effects even when you come back to life aren't big enough for this to become really good but we'll have to see maybe i'm missing something maybe there's some synergies that are not you know coming to mind right now next up we have the frozen flame uh, which is an item that just like some other items that we've seen will put more items in the shop that you can otherwise not see so i'll start with that ice items are offered in the shop i'm going to show you the items that it can create and offer in the shop uh after we're done looking at this but start a battle you gain 15 armor for each start ice item seems mad you can just play armor just play an armor piece you don't pick it for this right but yeah you can play ice items around it and gain some bonus armor once you gain five heat though you inflict two cold so this is a way that you can like more reliably inflict cold on opponents in case you have synergies with it or in case you just want to play a cold build because generating heat as we'll see it's pretty easy there's a lot of sources a lot of ways that you can gain Heat. and heat skills on itself because again the more heat you have the faster things go so you can start stacking cold almost exponentially as well of course it's way less cold than you will inflict heat uh, but for each cold your opponent has the item above in the diamond has plus two percent crit chance and plus two percent critical damage so this is a way that you can scale a weapon like if you have one big weapon or one weapon that you want to deal a lot of damage with gain a bunch of heat apply a bunch of cold maybe the weapon also applies cold somehow uh, then suddenly it will start dealing a lot more crit damage and has a higher crit chance so what are these ice items this is basically it the first one is the spell scroll frostbolt every three seconds you deal five damage which is not good uh, and you inflict four cold for three seconds so it inflicts cold but it's not permanent four cold is a decent amount but yeah so every three seconds four gold then the cold wears off then you apply it again uh, but important is that it has max uses so it has three maximum uses after three uses it stops working so for basically nine seconds you're gonna have or extra cold on your opponent and have dealt 15 damage but the maximum uses are increased by each uh, ice item around it so if you put a bunch of these items around the scroll then it will trigger more now except spell scrolls so you can't just stack spell scrolls uh, that doesn't work so you would have to put other ice items around spell scrolls in order for them to trigger more uh, maybe if you have enough scrolls it could be significant for some builds. Again, we saw uh, what ice can actually do. But yeah, moving on, we have Frozen Buckler. Now, this item can be both offered in the shop and crafted, I think. I've seen it in the shop, uh, but you can also create this by having a normal buckler, like a normal shield, and you put the spell scroll next to it. Uh, and then the spell scroll will combine into the shield, create a Frozen Buckler. I don't know if all of these items can be offered in the shop. Like, I know some of these are crafted as well. Uh, I've only seen Frozen Buckler being the only item that is both crafted and offered in the shop keep that in mind could be wrong about that these might also be offered in the shop i don't think so though these i've only been able to craft so far uh, but what it does is once you're attacked like a normal shield it has 35 percent chance to prevent damage and remove 0.5 stamina from opponent but it also inflicts a cold up to 10 
So every time it triggers, you're gonna inflict cold. This can be up to 10 permanent cold, which is really good. But if you play ice, uh, frozen buckler seems like a must. Like just like you play a spike build, where spike shields are decent, they're good because they give you like free spikes at most. 10 cold is, is a lot more than free spikes for a belt like this, I think. Then you have the Book of Ice. So you can also find this in the shop every 3 seconds. You use 2 mana to inflict 3 cold. So this uses mana to inflict cold, but the cold is permanent. Uh, the speed is the same as a spell scroll, but it does not have limited uses. So this will be used as long as you want. So you just keep applying cold. It also has 10% chance to cast the spell scroll for free. That is one of the star slots. The star slots are next to it. So if you have two uh, scrolls next to it, you have chances to trigger them an additional time or for free. Yeah. But then also this is next to an ice item. So the synergy, it triggers a fourth time. So you can play book with double scroll. It works pretty nicely. Helps you uh, build up a lot of cold quickly and skill cold if you have a mana source. Then we have ice armor. This is created by leather armor plus another spell scroll, uh, which just fuses together. Start a battle, you gain 45 armor, same as leather armor and inflict four cold. So from the get go, you're going to get four cold which is better than using the spell scroll which is only four gold for three seconds or nine seconds total um so i would always use this together every five seconds you use a heat to inflict two cold and gain 10 armor five seconds is very slow though like this is a very slow trigger uh, of course can be increased and it also eats your heat so you get a little bit less speed on everything uh heat is a good resource you could consume it and convert it into ice instead one heat to two ice seems like a good trade-off though and the 10 armor is also just a bonus so even though it's pretty slow if you find a way to speed those up i think it's a pretty good effect now you have frostbite uh, which is a weapon where you combine hunger blades together with a spell scroll as well the dps is okay it's 3.4 per second uh stamina is 0. 0.6 very very low it's like lower than a wood sword i, I like comparing stuff to wood sword because i think that's the easiest frame of reference for people cooldown is 1.6 so it's a little bit slower than wood sword uh, accuracy is 90 which is fine on hit it has a 70 percent chance to inflict the cold so pretty high chance to inflict cold it's not permanent and guaranteed but it's still good enough to be kind of consistent and it deals plus one damage per vamp so there's like no real ways for pyromancer to build a lot of vamp uh, as we've seen yet uh, so it's a bit weird you'd have to find other sources like blood amulet or things like that or maybe you play a hunger blade with it that could work and then you gotta find regen still uh, but it also gains plus 0.5 for each cold of your opponent so it's gonna scale on cold debuffs that your opponent has we've seen a lot of ways to instantly apply it all cold this could be a lot of damage now it's 0.5 so uh it's it's a little bit tuned down because i can see the snowballing really quickly but this doesn't seem bad if you're playing cold this is the weapon that is the payoff this is what you want to be playing and you're probably not even looking at the vamp the vamp is just a bonus also once your opponent reaches 30 cold you gain five vamp so you just gain an additional plus five damage and plus five life steal whenever you hit uh, which is kind of yeah it's a little bit extra maybe kind of nice because once you have 30 cold you already have 15 extra damage anyway so the five i mean the five is not irrelevant the life steal isn't irrelevant either but it's just yeah a nice bonus onto this weapon so if you play with frozen flame I think this is just what you go for. And last but not least, we have Ice Dragon. This is just offered in the shop, and it's just a dragon that you can buy and play. The damage is pretty high. 8 DPS, 15 to 12 damage is really strong. Stamina is 0 as well, but there's no downside to running this, especially since it's a dragon, so it's a ranged weapon. It does not trigger shields, no stamina drain, uh, and no spikes, so it's always just a bonus and always just good to have this. I don't really see why you wouldn't want this, except for the space or the money, maybe. And also, because it inflicts cold on hits. So the cooldown is 2.2 seconds, it's not very fast, but if it hits, it inflicts a cold. So it's kind of like a reverse chunk. Once your opponent reaches 20 cold as well, you gain 50 armor. Now, this dragon is not unique to Pyromancer, you can also get this on reaper i've talked about this uh, dragon before once i was reviewing the new reaper items and i think i remember saying that it's just a worse chunk because chunk uh will deal more damage the heat scales more exponentially cold does not really because you don't really go faster you kind of go compared to your opponent but it doesn't scale on itself so it scales slower than a chunk would but because of cold being able to scale so well with weapons like this and other uh sources i think it's pretty good the 50 armor is also kind of just like a bow is it's pretty good survivability so i think this dragon is really strong uh especially stronger on pyromancer than it would be on reaper on reaper it's a lot weaker hey that rhymes <laughs> and that's also what i said like on reaper it's 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 just extra but it's pretty good all right and then we have one more class item to go for and that is the dragon nest now there's a four by four square with some stores around it sort of battle it does a bunch of random shit it gives you three luck two regen four mana and five heat 
I have no clue why those values and numbers. I think it has something to do with the dragons that it introduces. Uh, but what this does is also it offers uh, dragon eggs in the shop. So a lot of these like uh, class items for both Berserker, Pyromancer, uh, but also uh, Reaper, Ranger, like they show different things in the shop that otherwise you wouldn't be able to get. So we're gonna take a look at the dragons in a second again as well. Um, basically, you're not picking this for the subtle battle effect you're picking it for the dragons and also that dragons around it once they attack they heal you for seven so your dragons are a bit of bit of sustain if you put a bunch of dragons around it you're just gonna heal a lot but also dragons hatch after one round so no longer waiting for two rounds you can buy an egg hatch it and have it active the round after now i will say this is all gonna depend on how strong dragons are because the effects are okay right like healing for seven uh, hatching eggs it's all okay but if dragons themselves are not strong this is really bad and ice dragon is pretty strong the issue is you cannot play this with dragon nest because i don't think it is offered in the shop when you buy this it's only offered once you pick the frozen flame so these are the three eggs that are offered one of them gives you free luck the other gives you four mana and the other one inflicts four random debuffs now the dragons that it gives are these little guys so you have the emerald whelp which 3.4 dps again not terrible 5 to 10 damage zero stamina cooldown is 2.2 so all pretty standard comparable to the ice dragon as well Start of combat you gain free luck which is mostly a courtesy for this class not really crit on hit it inflicts free poison so in in case you're playing poison on pyromancer which i have not really seen anything for uh this would be okay right poison could just be a bonus effect i guess uh, or bonus damage you're mainly picking this because it's just a dragon that hatches for free deals free damage and heals you uh if it's next to the unique item that you got from the shop you also have this sapphire whelp uh same stats as the other one sort of battle against four mana and on hit it uses two mana to gain five armor and another random buff so this does seem stronger though if you have a bunch of mana gain and a bunch of sapphire wells you're going to gain a bunch of armor on top of the healing on top of random buffs which could be more heat could be and power for that matter the other buffs are less relevant because vamp doesn't work with ranged weapons um, and then the last one is the amethyst well same set line again so the battle it inflicts four random debuffs kind of a bonus and on hit it removes a random buff from your opponent so again this one is more techy it doesn't scale it doesn't deal more damage it doesn't do anything crazy all it does is potentially remove buffs from your opponent that they could want to use so we see a lot of ways to like mess up builds right now that require buffs so maybe the meta is just going to be more like just pure damage on weapons less than relying on blood form and buff gain now i will say i don't think these dragons look that good like they don't seem that strong but because pyromancer is a class against heat really quickly dragons are going to be naturally good because they don't use any stamina so dragons are probably the biggest payoff for a lot of heat which is why chonk is so good now sadly with dragon you cannot play chonk uh, only reaper has the ability to play chonk you can also not play the ice dragon so you'll have to do with these dragons and normal whelps but that is actually not true because there's one more dragon that we'll see later that this class can play but yeah i think you just want a lot of heat scaling with this and then your dragons go really fast and then they will snowball enough you'll be able to heal enough and i think that's your win condition i don't think dragons on themselves are strong enough but if you can find the right tools with them um i think it could work now it's time to look at the items that you can find and craft uh so flame i've talked about already you also have chili pepper so the food item for this class every five seconds incredibly slow cooldown so it doesn't make it great you gain one heat and heal five uh so it is heat gain very slow heat gain again it can speed up on heat and and I, the way heat works it could end up being fine but early on this seems pretty slow and pretty bad but it has another effect whenever you have at least 10 heat you cleanse one debuff also not great i don't think chili peppers are the easiest way to scale heat or stack it uh we'll see some other items as well but it's decent and you will need chili pepper to make the goobert if you want to play it that we'll look at in a second now you have molten dagger which is combining dagger with flames basically uh the damage is 1.4 3 to 7 kind of whatever it has zero stamina still it's a dagger right like the cooldown is 3.5 pretty slow and the accuracy is okay but on hit it uses a heat to gain two damage so it scales damage with heat uh, and of course like a dagger with stuns it triggers an additional time now i was actually really surprised with this the two damage scaling is a lot early on uh, and because these are free it just free damage that scales up these have eventually got up to like 10 dps at some point if you have heat scaling uh, and i don't know if you really want to be doing a hammer with this like a hammer dagger on pyromancer seems tough to pull off maybe it's possible though uh but it seems like a strong dagger it, it seems like one of the stronger ones that you can play even though it's not like spectral dagger additional like instant burst damage this needs scaling 
uh, it looks like scaling on Pyromancer is good anyway, right? Because of the synergies. Then we have an item which is uh, probably one of the more interesting ones. It is a Draconic Orb. 15 heat is reached, your next 5 hits are critical. So this is a way to crit. If you just reach 15 heat, you don't consume anything, it's just extra. You can crit 5 times. So it's a way to just deal a lot of damage at a certain point. I feel like Pyromancer can easily start at 15 heat, so you can start with the crits. Not that you necessarily want that, because some weapons probably need time to scale up or to get stronger. Uh, so maybe you want to find a way to delay this anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's just the effect it has. But on top of that, every 2.5 seconds, it removes a spike from your opponent and gains a heat per removed spike. So this can also be heat gain if your opponent ends up playing spikes, which right now mainly Ranger plays spikes sometimes. Uh, against Berserker, they could play spikes. They don't seem likely to be playing spikes, but they could have a few. Reaper probably doesn't play spikes, but there's a lot of random buff gain as well. So if people gain random buffs, it could be spikes. This is not reliable heat scale. Don't pick this because you want a lot of heat. Pick this because you want to hit some crits. Uh, and because sometimes it can counter a spike bolt, I guess. But there's another reason to pick this and that's because it has some crafting recipes. So the reason why this is probably nice to pick up a lot of the time is because it can craft into uh, pretty strong items. Next up is the Molten Spear. This is Spear plus uh, Flames as well. DPS is pretty high. 4.7 is pretty high. Stamina is 0.7, which is Wood Sword. Accuracy is 65. It's really bad though. So it has terrible accuracy. Cooldown is still 1.5. But before miss, this is something we haven't seen yet. An effect before it is about to miss. You use a Heat to hit instead and deal plus 3 damage. So if you're gonna miss, you're gonna consume one of your Heats and deal plus 3 damage. Seems bad, like a weapon that only hits after it consumes heat. Uh, plus 3 damage is nice, it's still a lot of like burst I think, but you're just gonna eat heat to, to make sure this thing isn't gonna miss with its low accuracy. And on hit it still destroys armor, but for each start fire item in front of it. So uh, you can put flames in front of it or just fire items, but you can also just play normal spear and destroy armor by having nothing in front of it. Uh, it doesn't seem that great. It seems pretty strong early, but not something you want to keep around or something you want to rely on because it seems like a terrible way to use your heat. And we have flame whip. Uh, so another way that you can combine whip into something else. This is again just with flames. The damage is pretty high. It's 4 DPS. It's 6 to 10. The cooldown is kind of slow at 2. Uh, the stamina is also pretty high, just like most uh, whip combines or just whip itself. It is 1 stamina per second. So it's really hard to run a second weapon with this if you don't have uh, stamina solved. So Somehow. And on hit, it uses a spike to gain free heat and deal plus 6 damage. So if you can find spike gain in uh, Pyromancer, uh, you do some sort of spike setup, you're gonna gain a bunch of heat pretty quickly. Like free heat every 2 seconds is quite a lot. And also the plus 6 damage on the whip is pretty nice. The 6 damage does not scale though, the 6 damage is just per hit. So this is more of a bursty weapon to help you scale heat, it will get rid of your spikes. I don't think this is that good though, because I don't think you wanna... Uh, continuously find a spike belt just to make this weapon somewhat relevant. Uh, but it's a good mid game. I can see this being strong for a while, but I don't see you building around this because, again, the stamina is so high. Unless, again, well, we've seen that uh, this class could rely heavily on dragons and things like that and low stamina weapons like the dagger. So maybe that's how you look at it. Like, you just have this as your bonus weapon and then fill in some things around it, I guess. Now we have the chili goober. So the goober that you make with the chili pepper, five-star item activations, very standard. You heal for 10, which is not a lot, but you gain two heat permanently. So goober seems like a good heat scaler and that is why pepper i think is going to be good so if you play peppers uh combine it with goobers you maybe have one or two of these some fast activators because guess what obviously heat makes things go faster so goobers will go faster and faster and it just scales out of control like we've mentioned before it's pretty kind of exponential uh so i i think i like this it's also healing so it's not just heat gain it's also going to help you a bit with sustainability we also have the phoenix which is actually really interesting you can just find this in the shop it has 7 dps really high like 15 to 20 for zero stamina it's a ranged weapon doesn't trigger shields or spikes or anything like that so it's just really good accuracy is not insane though it's 85 percent the cooldown is 2.5 uh, but of course it's gonna have a downside because this would be too good to be true on attack you lose 10 health so the downside is that you lose 10 you deal 15 to 20 lose 10 so you can kind of do the math is it worth 
to lose this much but deal this much like is it gonna end up mattering but of course there's something else to it as well before the feat so if you're about to die maybe you kill yourself at the phoenix right uh, you use all your heats to reincarnate with 10 health per heat so kind of like the class item you can pick this thing will make you just spawn again you're gonna lose all your heat though so all the heat that you built up all the speed or all the other effects from it you're gonna lose but you'll gain so much health from it like let's say you have 20 heat that's 200 hp that you spawn with this seems absolutely ridiculous i think phoenix is a must-have in almost any build like it might be expensive though and it's a lot of space so that might be the main downside but it's free so much damage even though you deal damage to yourself you can find healing right They'll play some goobers with it and if you die you come back with like so much health if you don't really rely on heat as your win condition because you will use your heat to be fair you can gain heat again even if you come back it's kind of like going from from start again and you will just ramp up heat with certain items so i like phoenix a lot i think it's incredibly strong then we have burning sword now this is just a steel sword combined with flames as well uh the damage is 2.9 nothing crazy stamina is 0.5 the same as a steel sword accuracy and cooldown also pretty standard on hit it has a 60 percent chance to gain a heat so a little bit over 50 50 it is somewhat of a heat scaler that you can rely on. And once you gain 5 heat, this and the start weapons gain plus 1 damage, which is not that good. Like, compared to normal steel sword, it gives 2 damage already at start weapons. This is already more damage. Uh, this is conditional less damage. But you're mainly taking this because it gives you heat, right? It skills heat. And because it still crafts into something else, I guess that's another thing that uh, you'll see in a second. And here's the Sun Shield. Again, it's just combining Shield of Valor with two flames. Flames are just used for a lot of different crafting recipes. Uh, it's very similar, 35% chance to prevent 14 damage and remove 0.7 stamina from your opponent. But it's a shield that deals damage. Like whenever stored items around it gain 10 armor, you deal 4 damage. So if you have um, vamp armor next to it, or if you have just instant armor, maybe like a sun armor or just leather armor, you're going to instantly start dealing some damage, which it's not a lot, but it's still chip damage. It could still be relevant. And with vamp armor, it's continuous armor gain, and you could put uh, shields of valor next to it still to gain even more armor, deal more damage. So it's kind of nice. It's kind of an extra thing. I don't know necessarily if it's better than normal valor if you're relying on armor, though. Maybe it's better to just gain the bonus armor instead of the little bit of chip damage. But I was thinking, what if you just put a bunch of stone skin potions around this and just some multiple triggers and you just deal a lot of burst damage at the start? It sounds funny, I don't think you can one-shot people, like even if you fill up all the stores with stone skin potions, with strong stone skins, maybe if you also put Valors next to it and multiple triggers, you gotta get really lucky. There might be some sort of OTK here with multiple sun shields. But hey, that's for people to figure out. I'm just the messenger, okay? Uh, but looks interesting. There's also sun armor. Again, this is just holy armor plus two flames. Uh, so start fire items are also holy. So you can turn any fire item next to it into a holy item for some reason. There is some holy synergies. But also this has holy synergies. So uh, it kind of works on itself. Start a battle, you gain 70 armor, which is quite a lot. And you gain one heat for each start holy item. So every fire item or holy item around it is going to give you a bunch of starting heat as well, which is pretty good. Every three seconds, you're going to use a heat, however, to heal for 25 and remove two debuffs. Healing for 25 is a lot. Now you're going to start with armor. So at first, you might just be using heat for nothing. Uh, also, removing two debuffs is not bad. Like the normal holy armor only removes poison. This can remove any debuffs, including blind. Uh, so I do think this is really good. Uh, if you have consistent heat gain it's a lot of sustain i think uh, sun armors are gonna be kind of a key piece for most pyromancers now we're entering the really interesting items that i've kind of been teasing uh, this is crafted with a little orb that i mentioned earlier draconic orb and magic wand so if you put those together you're gonna fuse into the staff of fire staff of fire has a 3.3 dps nothing crazy stamina is pretty low uh cooldown is whatever same with accuracy uh, so it also is going to use mana to scale just like magic staff, but also heat. So you use two mana and two heat to gain plus five damage. So it scales more, but you have to use two resources. So in case you think, is it worth using one less mana and also heat to gain plus five damage instead of the plus three damage from magic staff? Uh, then you can go for this, which I'm not 100% sure. It looks really interesting, looks strong and probably fun to play with, but perhaps it's just better to stack a bunch of heat and scale a normal magic wand instead of use that heat. And now the other dragon, Obsidian Dragon. Now this I think is actually really strong. This guy seems nuts. 
And how it's made is also a draconic orb plus just a normal whelp. So you need to hatch a normal dragon, a normal whelp, and then combine it. And putting these next to your unique item, your class item, is going to be strong. Because this deals 3.4 DPS. Uh, same set line as all of the other dragons, kind of. But once you reach 15 heat, you gain free damage and trigger an extra attack. You're going to trigger extra attacks, you're going to gain plus 3 damage. This is going to be like your main damage dealer in a dragon comp, I think. So you still want to be finding normal dragon eggs, hatch them and combine them. Uh, it seems pretty strong. But yeah, I, I like it. I, I think this one is good. It's not as good as a chunk, obviously, but hey, we, we cannot all have a chunk. Then we have the Burning Blade. This is basically kind of like the hero longsword uh, of this class. So it's basically the Burning Sword with two more whetstones. So you would just turn this into a hero longsword. Then you get this guy. It is dealing 3.8 DP. DPS, stamina is still pretty low, it's nothing crazy, but on hit against a heat. So no more luck involved, the other one has 60% to gain heat, this is guaranteed heat. So in case you want heat scaling, you want a good weapon for it, this is it. For heat gained, this and start weapons gain plus one damage. So it's kind of a scaler, uh, it does give a lot more damage than this will, but this just seems like a good way to gain heat. So in case you want to figure out the early game, I think it's just going to be bowling into this weapon most of the time. It has low stamina as well, so you can even still play a staff of fire with it it all synergizes pretty well i think and of course there's this class's uh, rainbow goober this one has the funniest face of them all um rainbow goober epic glob uber vicious Vis i don't even know what the hell that means but yeah, you can make this now. That is most of it for Pyromancer. I think that you guys need to know. Let me know what you think of this class. Uh, I think it's going to have such an interesting playstyle. And again, if you want to see games with this being played or different builds, make sure you subscribe to the channel or check out the Twitch. Thank you for watching uh, and I'll catch you in the next one.